<laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I am back. I know that you weren't expecting, expecting that. You were not expecting that for me to be back so quickly. But here I am. I am back with another great DSA family. Right? You've seen the title. Thank you, Godwin. How are you? Justin, oh my God, you're such a regular. Thank you so much for joining us. And we have Anne-Marie. Thank you, Jake. Hmm, your honors. Thank you, thank you. Akin, hello. Akin, perfect. Thank you for sharing. Guys, Akin didn't even have to wait for me to say share, share, share. He just went ahead and shared. So guys, you do the same, please. Do the honors and share this. The more, the merrier. I can, I can, oh, Pastor Inkiru, I almost said Akiru. Pastor Inkiru, how are you? I hope you're okay. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for coming back so quickly. Um, Laulu, good afternoon. Oh, how are you? We miss you over here. Yes. I hope to see you again soon, you and your wife. And you can also bring your children. It will be good. So thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Right, start sharing because now we've got a duo. You've seen me already. A duo for this interview. It's going to be fun, 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 fun. It seems like it's been a marathon interview day today. We'll see. I might even come back with more after this one. But now, let's focus. Let's focus on this two great DSA family couple i'm going to turn the camera now because you might know their name but you don't know how they look <laughs> so let's just turn the camera for them to say hello all right Da -da -da. Hello. <laughs> hello hello everybody how are you <laughs> thank you for joining us uh, it's been a wonderful experience being here these past few days That's and right. uh, it's gonna be even greater after the during and after this interview because you get to hear our views, know what we think, how we feel, the experience of being here these past few days, and right. uh, yeah, it's been great. It's yes. been an honor to be here, and thank you, Maya, for this opportunity That's also right. to share, share, share. share. <laughs> <laughs> That's my new name now. My new name here is Share, Share, Share. And you know what? I don't even mind, okay? Share, Share, Share. So, guys, it's really interesting. I'm going to start not just asking questions, but I just want to introduce who these people are. So, we have here Mr. Disu. So, it's Mr. Sunday Disu. He has a platform on Facebook. So please check him out. Is the platform name is A Better Man, and it goes live every Thursday at eight p.m. UK time. <laughs> Not just for men, right? Because men, women also need to you know, identify a better man. So become a better man is the topic area, but it's not just for men. So there is this platform. It comes every Thursday at 8 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, GMT, okay? So that's London time for some people that don't know. I only just find that. No, not really. I knew this from ages. <laughs> GMT. So make sure that you check out um, Tunde Disu. I almost said Dr. Tunde Disu. <laughs> you know what? I want to make everybody a doctor because here in Ukraine, Doctors are everywhere. All the students here are doctors. So please pardon me when I say doctor, but it had, there's a reason for it because everyone is a doctor here. So Tunde Disu, Mr. Tunde Disu, but his name on Facebook is Tunde Disu. So why don't you check him out and follow him? So the topic that he has a platform on is becoming a better man or become a better man. And it's for both male and female. So for the female, you know by watching him and learning from him the kind of man to 
that is a better man for you. And then for men, you become a better man. It's a win-win. Okay, so check him out. Um, Mrs. Diesel, yes. right? Mrs. Adeola Diesel. <laughs> guys, you guys have heard this name a few times on DSA's <laughs> platform. This is our graphic designer. <laughs> this is the person that put the faces, the colors, the words, all those things together for us. So I would like you to meet he, her as well and say hello. Yeah, hello everyone. Adeola Disu here. There, there, <laughs> Adeola Disu. Disu. Yeah. <laughs> and this is my husband, Mr. Tunde Disu. Um, we are married and we have three children. We have a young man and two young ladies. Mm. <laughs> mm. Okay, I think the interview has just started now. Okay. <laughs> So I have introduced them. They introduced themselves and I introduced them in my own way as well. Just, I need to honor them because they are a big part of DSA family. You know, everything that you see, materials, the car designs, the posters, they is designed, all designed by Mrs. Disu. And also, if you heard during the Golden Jubilee time, Dr. Sunday during the evening session also mentioned that Mrs. Mr. Disu is our editor for the magazine, so he corrected the English because a lot of the uh, content of the magazine was in Russian before, and then it was changed into English. And the person to put the English right, Mr. Disu. Okay, so they are a dynamic duo. D D D. I think it's about D D D D here. <laughs> so I'm not gonna say share share share. So when I say when I say D D D, that means you should share, right? In this just this interview, I'm just gonna say D D D. Okay? Yeah, that's our cue. So it's all about the D's right now. Okay. Right. So thank you guys for watching with us. I know this has been a marathon interview day. This is my third interview today, and possibly there's going to be more to come. But I do appreciate you for joining. I am so grateful and I'm sure that our interviewers and interviewees are also grateful. So without further ado, let's D D D. D D D. You know what that means? Share, share, share. So let's D D D. Because let's take it to the distance. Why don't we why don't we improvise? Okay, let's go. So I want to know, first of all, this is the first question I usually ask. Your encounter, first, first ever encounter with DSA. Because now you're part of the family, That's you true. know. Well, how was your conception? How was your birth okay. to this family? Yeah. Okay, I'll go first. Um, I think my um, connecting with um, Dr. Sunday Adelaide is in two parts. So, um, as early as um, 1999, um, I think 2000 in between those two years and um, God drew my attention to Dr. Sunday Adelaide on um, a Christian channel TV and um, we were fascinated um, by um, who he is then and the fact that he was leading this church that is 99.999% um, white um, Europeans um, but what um, happened at the time was we would just put him on but I wasn't listening at all to his messages and that went on for a while because we were so busy with the ministry that we were in at the time and our duties but um, sometimes last year September of 2016 um, God gave me a second chance um, to get connected to him and this time properly um, a friend of ours um, attacked me on a link to um, his Facebook teachings on this wonderful Saturday. Because on this day, I was, um, we had been planning, I've been a bit concerned um, for our nation, um, Nigeria and Africa in general. Um, because I love Nigeria with all of my heart, even though I live in the UK. And I always say to my husband then that, you know, there has to be something that we in the diaspora can do um, to rebuild our walls, um, our broken down walls in Africa. And this Saturday afternoon in September, I was still just walking about with my husband and saying we need to start 
um, a campaign and we're going to call it, you know, um, submit a skill, you know, to call on all Africans in diaspora to submit a skill because we're in all of these nations all around the world, you know, um, um, getting all our um, certificates and our titles and academic achievements and doctorates, you know, PhD in this engineering. And um, we're using all of our skills and knowledge um, to help develop other nations. And yet, when people talk about Africa, all we hear is, you know, is connected to charity, you know, people in need, in poverty. And I was a bit concerned about that. And I was saying that we need to call on all Africans in the diaspora um, to submit a skill. We're going to open this um, uh, Facebook social, uh, uh, social platform network mm -hmm. and call it Submit a Skill um, to the Development of Africa. And um, I was, we we're about to conclude that. And um, when I saw this link come in, um, I don't usually click on links like that straight away, but I did on this Facebook Saturday. And it was a link linking me to um, Dr. Sandy Adenaiger about the Nigerian Transformation Project. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that, I screamed. I just said, look at this, look at this. I'm just talking to you about, you know, Nigeria, Africa, and this has come through. And I was really excited about it. And straight after that, um, because the, the, there was a, an email that, you know, that you would, um, there's a, an email to, to write to pastor, which is um, pastor at godembassy.org. And I thought, okay, I will send him an email, but I wasn't expecting that he would respond back to me or that maybe his secretary or somebody, like a personal assistant, would reply me. But within a few minutes, he responded to me. And when he responded to me, I sort of, I was in shock at first. Then I stepped back. I didn't say anything. I went quiet. I said, Timmy, look, look at this. Um, I just sent him an email about this and he responded. And I didn't. I didn't, I didn't say anything anymore. And then I left it. Then he, he wrote me again and said, hello, you sent me an email and I've not heard a response back from you. <laughs> I was still in shock. When I, when I saw the second email, my husband wasn't around there. So I left it still and then he sent me a third email. Then I, I responded to that and said, I would like my husband to be present so that we could, you know, uh, to get a Skype you or something like that. And um, when my husband came, I said, well, Dr. Sonia Adelaide had responded three times and I think it's time to respond because I was saying to him then that, if, I was thinking in my head, not saying to him, that, oh, what would I say? What if he asked me a question that I don't know how to answer properly? But my husband, you know, can talk for the whole world, so he'll be able to rescue me out of that. Thank you. And that's how we got connected. Um, but, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm going to introduce you, but this is really interesting. <laughs> I am so intrigued. Guys, why don't you D, D, D right now? Because if we D, 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 more people will come up to listen to the D's, you know? So they can listen to the dishes and we can get more of what's happening, what happened and what is happening. So first of all, you said, yes. Mrs. D encountered Dr. Sunday many years ago, 99 stroke 2000 at yes. some point. Yes. But he was play, she was playing on a Christian TV, was, was hearing what was playing in the background, mm -hmm. saw him, so he was preaching or was uh, teaching, and they were listening, they were hearing it, but they were not taking it in. Mm -hmm. It wasn't digesting. No. But then that leg went and, you know, they didn't do anything for many years. Then come 2016, September, hmm, this is when it happened. 2016, September, then they started to listen. But how did that happen? Somebody sent them a link. A link that she, doc, Mrs., Dr. Mrs., Mrs. D, not usually open links, but this particular link, she decided she opened it. And it was about something that, they have passion about. They previously, for many years, had passion about Nigeria, about Africa, about developing Africa. And she said that 
with Africa, they had such burden for Africa and the people in diaspora mm -hmm. with the skill sets that they have acquired, with the mm -hmm. certificate, with the education, mm -hmm. with the development, all of that together, that we can do something about, to Af about Africa. Mm -hmm. We can go back to Africa and make Africa great again. Mm -hmm. In the words of Donald Trump. <laughs> but they said it before Donald Trump. Okay? That was before Donald Trump, all right? They were the first person to coin that. Donald Trump just stole it from them. <laughs> so, Africa can be great again, but with this skill set. So, they decided to set up an organization where they would have um, a skills summit, submit a skill for Africa development or so, something like that. Submit a skill for Africa development. And they were thinking about that and they were on the verge of like, we need to do something. This is such a burden. And that link came true. And in that link, when they clicked on it, it was about Nigeria Transformation mm -hmm. Project. Wow. <laughs> How does this is, you know, this is about life and opportunity and God. Yes. You know, God delivers everything. Everything we need to do, what we need, when we ever, to achieve what we want to achieve is already here on this earth. Yes. So that link, being one of them, sent to them and connecting them with Dr. Sonny. So after Mrs. Disu checked out the link and everything with her excitement. She spoke to her husband in a usual style. It's like, my husband, I need to do this. You know, do you do this? <laughs> this is just me, okay? <laughs> this is my <a> drama. <laughs> because she was saying that I was imagining everything, okay? So she was like, my husband, look at what came out. You know, this and that. And then they decided that, okay, right. She decided, actually, I am going to contact him. Mm -hmm. Then she sent Dr. Sunday an email, yeah. pastor at godembassy.org. Yeah. And immediately, hers <laughs> is, immediately she got a reply. Yes. So she got the reply and panicked and thought, oops, I wasn't expecting a reply. <laughs> this is one thing that we all do, guys. <laughs> when you do something, expect. <laughs> Don't just do it for the sake of it. But luckily for her, she knew that this was a second chance of life. Mm -hmm. Second, second chance of opportunity, yes. second chance of purpose. Yes. So even though she was reluctant at first, because she panics, she wasn't expecting that. That was in her world where she get responses immediately. Mm -hmm. So that's understandable. She can be forgiven, okay? Because she's here already. <laughs> so after the first one, you know what intrigued me the most? She didn't reply on the first email. <laughs> she sent an email, right? And then she got an email back and she didn't reply. Okay, she refused to reply. I don't know what's going on here. So I'm not going to reply. Then what happened? Dr. Sunday discerned and sent another email and said, Hello. I don't know what he said, but I'm going to say my, what I think that happened in that email. I wasn't there. <laughs> Hello. Okay, you sent me an email. You spoke very well. I'm interested to hear. And I sent you an email, but you haven't replied me. What's going on? Hmm, hmm, hmm. In Dr. Sunday's side. Hmm, hmm, hmm. What's going on? And then she saw the second email and thought, oops, I better tell my husband because I don't know what to say. I don't, I'm not prepared for this. What should I say? What should I do? And then she spoke to her husband and said, okay, I'm going to talk to Dr. Sunday. I'm going to communicate with him, but it has to be with my husband because my husband is the champion here. <laughs> he is the one that can help with this that could help me to venture out. He is my better half, as we say it. Or he is my stronger half. She is the better half, and he is my stronger half. My stronger arm. Oh, yeah? So, <laughs> so guys, I'm dramatizing this. Because I need to dramatize this so that you guys can really get this. So, from that day onwards, yes. they communicated with Dr. Sunday. Yes. And here we are. Uh -huh. Okay? Yes. But that's not the end. I'm just kind of breaking it down for you. So I'm going to go to Mr. D. Yes. What's your story? Uh, thank you so much, Mayowa, for your graphical demonstration <laughs> and illustration of uh, what my wife said. And the Bible talks about in all of your getting, get understanding. Yeah. And I think the, the dramatization really... <laughs> brought a lot of understanding uh, <laughs> to the DSA family worldwide. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. My first knowledge or my first uh, 
contact. Well, I won't call it contact. I first heard about Dr. Sonia Delager around 2000 and 2001. I was uh, part, we were part of another ministry then, and I worked closely with the the senior pastor of that ministry, and he spoke to me and he said, "I heard about a Nigerian pastor in Ukraine, and that his church is full of is made up of almost ninety percent." Uh, white Europeans and he's a Nigerian, he's a young man and it would be good to contact him and just see if we can establish a relationship mm -hmm. and so we did send a letter to Dr. Sunday Adelaide, <coughs> or he, the pastor sent a letter uh, he got a response from Dr. Sunday Adelaide and what he wanted to do then was to come to Kiev to see Dr. Adelaide but he never followed, my pastor never Follow through with that with that plan for whatever reason. So that was the first time I really heard about Dr. Adelaide, and also in the process of writing the letter, we checked on his website, mm -hmm. just tried to get to know him a little bit more from afar. And will that didn't happen then? So that phase mm -hmm. went. And like my wife said, um, we are Nigerians, proud to be Nigerians honor to be Africans, and there has always been, especially in her heart, this need for Africa to be, to be seen the way it is, in the sense that most of the stories that goes out in the news, in the media about Africa, I see that about one disaster, a civil war, famine, uh, disease, and corruption. Yeah. It, it is predominantly very negative news. Yes. And so he, she came up with the, the heart, the burning in her heart to say, there's so much beauty in Africa. Yeah. Why don't we set up a platform? She's a graphic designer, <laughs> and she's very good at it. Sometimes we, sometimes in the past, we started a magazine called uh, The Replica. And on the back of that, she came up with the idea that why don't we have another magazine called Mother Africa? The um, uh, um, Dreamland. The Dreamland. Land, um, Africa. Yeah. The Dreamland no, Africa. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no which will be a catalog that will represent different facets of Africa, the beauty, the, 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 uh, the glory of Africa, yeah. the people, yeah. the color, yeah. the landscape, yeah. the, the good things about Africa, the treasures of Africa, the treasures of Africa yeah. something to be an alternative voice to what is predominantly in yeah. the news. Yeah. And so we, we started planning about that and in mm -hmm. fact we started sending contacts to all our friends in different parts of Africa to sell the idea of look yeah. we're planning to do this we contacted people in South Africa in Kenya yeah. Ghana Cameroon Gambia everywhere just to get a feel and people were up for it and then she escalated that to <laughs> the idea of let's put a platform up where yeah. people can submit their skills that they can render yeah. back to Africa. Yeah. So the two ideas were, we were working on both ideas and then one day I came back from work and she said, oh, guess what? No, it was on a Saturday. It was on a Saturday. Saturday yeah. Yeah. It was a Saturday. Yeah, and she said, oh, somebody, one of her friends sent this link and this and and one thing led to the other, and the next thing, we got two, three <laughs> emails from Dr. Sunday <laughs> Adelaide, and, and like you said, it, it's not, it's not a common thing, especially mm -hmm. in the Christendom where you you write to a pastor, yeah, 
and you get an immediate response. Yeah, that's why I was. That's number one. <laughs> number two, you 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 wrote to a pastor and you get an immediate response, not from his secretary or his <laughs> PA, but directly from him. Yeah. So that immediately makes us think, this is weird. This is <laughs> this is not the norm. It's not the norm. Yeah. And then we schedule to have a Skype. Uh, chat with Dr. Adelaide, mm -hmm. which was supposed to be for about 15 <laughs> 20 minutes. And on that, the, the agreed date and time, we he called in and we sat talking. Mm -hmm. And this chat that was supposed to be for <laughs> 20 minutes, precisely we spent two, two hours, 12 Probably, minutes. Yeah, it was so long. Two hours, 12 minutes mm -hmm. on this Skype chat. And it was like we've known each other since yeah. no I was born. He wanted to know about us. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to start discussing about um, my project. But he just said, no, no, no. Let's, do, let's just know each other. You know, who are you? Mm -hmm. let's, yeah. And the funny thing, one of the things he said was, do you know, way some years back, somebody told me that's a, a young Nigerian guy who is working with a ministry in England, and that ministry is making waves. And, and I've been wondering, who is this young Nigerian guy that is doing all of this in, in England yeah. with this ministry? It'd be yeah. good to know him. So I said, well, here I am. And it, it was interesting to, it was an interesting uh, connection. Yeah. And it has been a glorious one as well. heartwarming story. <laughs> I don't think I need to summarize <laughs> Mr. Deuce's account because it was so well put. Not that yours wasn't well put. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think I need to summarize everything but I'll just take some key yeah. notes there. Yeah. Okay, the first note is that in the beginning this first encounter many years ago was with his pastor. Right? His pastor talking about Dr. Sunday and that pastor saying, okay, let's contact him. They made all the checks and, you know, through internet to find out where he is. Because, you know, he's somebody that was a pastor of mostly white in thousands. So they just wanted to get in touch with him. But for some reason, they sent an email. The email got a response. But his pastor at the time decided not to follow up. Whatever the reason, we don't know. And, you know, what intrigued me about that story is that it was somebody else that initiated it. This is life, right? Mm -hmm. And who is now very close to Dr. Sunday. Like, you know, this is how life works out. You know, sometimes we say, oh, I know a deaf person first. But then you end up being more closer to the person that, more closer than the person that even introduced you. Yeah. Not that the pastor did, but I'm just trying to get you a picture here. That this is how life and opportunity works but they were also proactive so don't forget that it's not just about them sitting down and doing nothing so after that first initiative that didn't really um work out to uh, a relationship with dr sunday mm -hmm. they moved on they had another encounter which is through what i explained before and also through all the ideas mm -hmm. and um uh, development for africa so that actually was probably the conduit that mm -hmm. helped for them to get the opportunity because they had ideas, they had information that, mm -hmm. you know, call upon help, upon resources, yes. you know. So this was happening for them. I'm thinking I'm talking in the spirit realm now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys, you know, possibly, I don't know nothing about the spirit realm, but I am feeling this, that, you know, this was working for them. You know, God was working for them somewhere, yes. you know, but they had ideas, they had information, they had passion, and that came forth for them. He spoke for them. I think Dr. Sunday talks about this a lot. I don't know how to put it in the context, right, because I don't have the right words. I'm not very, very religious, so um, I don't want to be religious, so I don't know how to put it. But I feel like this opportunity was meeting people that seek opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't that, you know, they just sat down. They had ideas. 
they were seeking for opportunity they were still putting ideas together they were seeking solution mm -hmm. so opportunity was coming to them it was right. gravitating towards yes. them that's what i was getting from this okay okay that's just me all right mm -hmm. and then so this encounter with what happened with Mrs. Disu and Mrs. Disu idea about submitting skills in Africa then brought them together. But then let me fast forward to where first conversation, the first Skype call. <laughs> this call apparently was supposed to be for 15 minutes. <laughs> and it was supposed to be about, okay, this is what the project is about, this is my husband, this is my wife, and you know, this is what we, we were talking about, we just want to discuss it. And Dr. Sunday, I'm very, very familiar with that stuff, <laughs> because that was, just, that was what happened to me, okay? We call Dr. Sunday, or Dr. Sunday calls you, he sets up the time, he says, by email, this is what he does, right? Let me just tell you, a little bit gist. So... <laughs> He sets up the time and said, okay, I'm on Skype. I don't have a phone. So do you have Skype? You reply, yes, I have Skype. This is my Skype details. Right. Or no, I don't have Skype, but I'm going to get, I'm going to set up one. <laughs> I had Skype, but I don't even use it because, you know, I have free um, unlimited calls. So I don't use Skype. So I said, okay, I'm going to set up a Skype. Just bear with me. I'll send you the details, okay? Just stop. Just wait, wait, wait. <laughs> So I set up, well, like, I'm not, let me talk about me. So they set up their Skype, or they had Skype already. And then they set up this time. They sat down, they sat down, ready. Cling, 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 cling. The Skype ringing. And then they pick up, hello, Dr. Sunday. How are you? How are you doing? I'm this You know, Sunday. I'm this <laughs> And then they started the conversation. And the conversation was like, okay, this is what we're planning. Dr. Sunday was like, oh, 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 hold on. Hold on, guys. I want to get to know you. Yes, Don't you want to get to know me? <laughs> this is what it says. I'm telling you. Yeah. It says, wow, come on. Do you just want us to just go to that? Why don't we get to know each other? Huh? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah. You know, get to know me. I get to know you. Let's start with that. And then you're like, oh, really? Really? Okay, let's do it. And then that 15 minutes, seriously. He would ask questions, you would ask him questions. He would, even if you don't ask him, he would say, oh, don't you want to ask me about this? That's, right. That's what Dr. Sonnet says. Yes. Don't you want to ask me? He's like, okay, can I ask you? Like, yeah, feel free. <laughs> and that conversation would go on. It would be like you're meeting an old friend. That's right. You know, That's how it is. That's how it is. You know, and I've said it before. I'm saying it again. And here is another couple that's saying the same thing. I don't think we've ever discussed this. No. But this is what happened. So I just thought I'd give you that little account and my dramatization. You know I like my dramatization, guys. Okay, let's move on. Okay? So that's brilliant. So after that um, first encounter and getting to know him and everything, so what was your um, next stage? How, does, how did that evolve? You know, I would like that in a nutshell because I just want, I want to go to your trip here now. And this okay. golden jubilee. Yeah. Okay. Evolve, evolve. Okay. Um, for me, um, because um, apart from the my passion for Africa and the rebuilding of walls and all this, um, I believe that my first primary assignment from God is to publish His Kingdom Mandate, and um, and I also believe that Doctor Sunday Adelaide um, has got that mandate um, assignment. So um, from the time that we got connected to him and um, I started listening to him on the platform, I just felt a desire. It came to me naturally to start to um, publicize um, uh, what he's doing on Facebook. And especially towards December of last year when he started to advertise the fact that he was releasing a book towards um, Nigeria, um, uh, Only God Can Save Nigeria, What a Myth. Um, I was really excited about that because I had passion for, for, for that. And um, when that book was released, um, I started to um, take excerpts from the book so that people can have um, a greater understanding of the content of the book. So I would put, I would just take an excerpt and just um, put it onto a banner and we started to you know push that um every week you know um five banners six banners just so that we can advertise the book more and it would there will be a clearer understanding of the contents of the book and what the book was released for 
and um, that went on and on um, his platform um, all of his broadcasts we would advertise all through and my first time um, of coming to Ukraine was during the HMT in April I thought it was time for me to meet him um, because it's one thing um, to listen to him um, on the platform but it's another thing if you want to take it further and to know the man behind the screens is to actually come to meet with him live in his live teachings and um, I came to Ukraine for the first time and experienced um, a life changing, you know, uh, a life changing English for me. <laughs> Experience. Experience. <laughs> oh, That's <guys>. right. <laughs> I like the way that she's looking <laughs> looking at him for affirmation. Yeah, yeah, that's that oh, you know, she said everything she wanted to say and then he's like, Oh, look at my husband. Let me look at him for affirmation. You know, a <laughs> life changing. Finish it for me. <laughs> that was really interesting. Okay, guys. Right. This is Mr. D Mrs. Mrs. Dissel. She's yeah. saying her first experience and how that evolved um to her coming here to Ukraine attending the HMT. I was here during the HMT in April and her attendance was like <laughs> half working and half um, HMT because she was constantly engaging with all the other activities that needs to be, you know, to produce something for uh, DSA or produce something for DSA teaching or uh, the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. So she was a real key member during the HMT and also beyond. As you know, Dr. Sunday already announced that she did the whole magazine, the limited edition magazine, which we are praying that Dr. Sunday is going to release unlimited, yeah, uh, unlimited, so everyone can have a copy at least. So, um, how it evolved, that's your account. Are you happy with that account? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so that's Mrs. D Mr. Dissu that I'm asking, because we've got to ask, okay? Mm -hmm. Maybe he has his own. So, mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about this trip. Yes, this you know, is because this trip is the first trip together, mm -hmm. and it's, a, it's for a purpose um, that I know, which is the Golden Jubilee, <laughs> but you might have another purpose. So I want to talk about this trip and how you feel, because I believe for you, <laughs> Mr. Gisto, this is your first time yes. meeting uh, Dr. Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I think this will be more for you to tell us about this trip. Yes. Oh, where do you want me to start? Um, let me just back up a little bit to the how this relationship then, then evolved and developed from our initial uh, contact. We, like my wife said, she's very passionate about promoting the kingdom of God with the skill that, skills that God has given her, which is graphic design. And so she started doing... She would take like a quotation, a statement, put it in a good, on a good banner, uh, and then she would send it off to Dr. Sunday Aguilaja for him to, to see and see if he likes it. And then I think after sending the second one, yeah. she sent it, and within a space of yeah. 10 minutes, three or so of those banners were already posted on Facebook of Dr. Sonia Adelaide's Facebook. So that immediately sent a, a, a signal of acceptance mm -hmm. to her and for me too, uh, because you could have sent it and hear nothing back, it's no use and nobody said anything. And that immediately prompted her to do more. And because she's a graphic designer, there's always Mm, that don't look right. Maybe they could have done it better. Maybe and, and all of that. And so she started improving on whatever it's out there, mm -hmm. and also adding some of her own flavors to, uh, to to it. So that grew. Then we had a second Skype chat with Doctor Sunday Adelaide, and that's when he then said that his fiftieth birthday anniversary, the Golden Jubilee, is coming in May. And that he will want both of us to be part of the planning team that will plan towards it. And actually asked me to come up with some ideas of what can be done during the celebration. And I'm thinking, no, he didn't say that. 
<laughs> he said, no, that, yeah, that from what we, the way we've been talking, he perceived that I would have been involved with a lot of preparing, planning such activities, and he would like me to come up with some ideas of what can be done. Uh, so I said, okay, I will look into it. And about two or three days later, I got an email from him to say, how far? <laughs> and I'm thinking, this guy is serious. <laughs> so we sat together, came up with, I think, about... Yeah, we, we had a list. A list of different ideas. Yeah, so we emailed it to him. He then emailed back to say, he got the list. He would like for us to have another Skype chat where we can discuss it in yeah. details with his team. So we did, and we went through each idea on the list, what we think, how we see it working, and different. And immediately there was this, there was this sense of mm -hmm. oneness, and of yeah. connection. There yeah. was this level of connection that is beyond, uh, uh, beyond the superficial. And it, it, it also didn't come across as if he wanted this connection so that he can get something from us towards the preparation for his golden jubilee. This was nothing to, this is something far beyond the immediate uh, 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 upcoming ceremony, which is the, the celebration of his birthday. And so that for me was, was, yeah. was, was wonderful. Yeah. And immediately we started conversing, exchanging ideas. And it was in the process of that that he then said, do you know what? I think I have an assignment for you. <laughs> and he will, that he's got some books written in Russia that has been translated to English using Google Translate. But he would like for me to read through and polish them and edit them. And I'm thinking, <laughs> this, is, this is real. <laughs> and so that's how the whole process of editing uh, the materials in the in the magazine started. Uh, got in contact, or rather, Galena, one of his personal assistants, got in contact with me, and we were exchanging emails. She would send me the manuscript. I would read through, do the editing, send it back, and and it's just been it's been very stressless the relationship the contact the activities the working together it's just been so stressless it's been so smooth and so coming back to the trip to ukraine <laughs> it was during one of the correspondences that he said i'd like to invite the whole family <laughs> as my special guest during the celebration and i'm thinking yeah. wow uh, and then he repeated that invitation again via email and so we we knew this is happening we discussed it with our children uh, and during that time dsa tv was launched our son already is uh, very gifted with uh, video editing so we and my wife discussed yeah, with him yeah. to say, Dr. So Adelaide is starting a, a TV uh, program. It would be good for, if you don't mind, looking into doing a video intro, intro yeah. into the TV uh, program. And let's submit and it. And let's submit it and see if, it, if it's something yeah. that he's uh, happy with. So he did. We sent it to Dr. Sunday Adelaide and bam, he's like, wow. He liked it. He, 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 he surprised he, me. So gradually, the relationship was building and improving and getting stronger and closer and all of that. So my wife came for the April <laughs> HMT, and then the magazine started. Yeah. And it started as an 80 page initially. Oh, well, I mean, he has said that um, because there was a lot of content, so he didn't really mind um, how many pages they would. You know, but it grew anyway yeah. from, you know, we had um, um, a content list mm. and all of the information and Galena and um, the whole team, you know, researching and putting things together. 
all the photographs. It was just really awesome to be a part of something great. Mm -hmm. Really looking forward to celebrate a legend because really uh, we've not spoke about how he's impacted our lives with his teachings. And um, I just want to use the opportunity to say that because um, we, um, uh, prior to knowing him, we'd been going through some really rough patch patches and we were just, you know, riding along and believing God, you know, for a change in our situations. And then, bam, we, we got connected, you know, even though it was through something else, but we got connected to him and started to listen to him. And, you know, through his teachings, you know, and for me, how to regain, you know, your lost years, how to, um, I even wrote down some so that I don't forget, you know, they stopped working for Augustine before the book was published, and how to start something from nothing, you know, all of those just caught my attention due to what we were going through because we, were, we weren't really um, going anywhere anymore. After all the crisis that was coming, we were just so confused as to what we needed to do. And all of those just started to bring back hope in our lives and we started to listen i would just listen endlessly you know you know because i sometimes i work from home so i would just put it on and just listen so that the word can enter me and you know faith in in the word and how to do things so that to you know come back to me and i started to see the way out and you know all of that uh started happening now I, I was just really thanking god that we had, you know, he gave us a second chance to reconnect back to him, and I believe is to rebuild our lives. So when I see things like how to regain your lost years, I was really excited at those teachings. So I would listen to it for years, and then we started to rebuild back again, and we started to see God's goodness in our lives. You mm -hmm. know, things started to change for us, and also um, because I would you know, sometimes discuss with the children, they would hear me, you know, I would always run to the broadcast 7.30 in the morning, even while we were preparing to, you know, um, start our day school work and everything, you know, record it onto my iPad and play it in the car, you know, all of those things just started going on and we started seeing changes and we were really stressed before then, but then it started getting better for us. And even coming to HMT and then now, to celebrate him, I think um, it's just, um, it, it's phenomenal for me um, and for you as well and the children here now um, because it was like um, God sent us a deliverer um, and, um, and I was really, I was really looking forward um, um, to be here to, to celebrate him with other people all around the world and then to also publicize what is really going on so that people can benefit also because there's a lot of people um, who are oppressed and enslaved and uh, you know are confused in the world and um, for what through his platform through his teaching has done for me is the same that I wish for other people and that's one of the reasons why I publicize him so that you know um, I believe he's come God has you know, um, sent him to, to this earth, especially to deliver people from the bondages, the slavery uh, mentality and uh, from oppression that these people are going through. It's more like, you know, uh, God sending the deliverer to the Israelites and mm -hmm. delivering them from the hands of the um, Egyptians then, you know. Um, so it's, it, it's really, um, in fact, I don't really want to go back here because I, I, I think, you know, that you know, he just needs to be celebrated all throughout, just like we're saying that we're celebrating all throughout the year because he is that kind of a person. I mean, he's, he's, um, his kind of person is not common at all. I think they come once in a lifetime or, well, maybe in a century or something <laughs> like that. You know, um, yeah, that's what I want to wow. add to that. Yeah, and also in addition to that, I think um, one of the things that, or one of the, advantage that we have as a couple as a family is that over the years we've been involved in a lot of churches and ministries yeah. and so we've seen how things are done yeah. we've seen the good the bad the ugly we've seen everything and in between and one of the things i can say about dr sunday Adelaide mm -hmm. is he's different
is different, not just as a person, not just as a pastor, but he's different in his philosophy and his, his understanding mm -hmm. of the word. That's right. He's different in his relationship with God, which is very real and very, yeah. you can <laughs> see it in, in practical demonstration. Yeah. But I think the greatest part of it is that he's different in his ability to take what is seemingly complicated, deep, and, mm -hmm. and clustered, and, and really difficult. He's gifted in the ability to really break it down yeah. to <laughs> bite size, very simple to, to take on, very easy to swallow, and very easy tools in your hands to take and use immediately. I will go as far as to say he's different because he's not religious. Yeah. <laughs> and I think a lot of us Christians, we have, we have been drowned in religion. Yeah. In different ways and in different yeah. uh, uh, avenues. We have been it, he put it this way, Dr. Sunday makes living a Christian life an easy one. Yeah. <clears throat> not that he condones sins or, 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 or irresponsibilities. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. But he, he through his teachings and his lifestyle, you can see that you can actually mm -hmm. be the Bible Christian. <clears throat> and you don't have to act to be. Yeah. You just be. Yeah. Secondly, it makes being a Christian, uh, it makes it interesting and contagious. Yeah. That's right. That you can all, you, you, you're not, there's, there's a real, renewed pride in saying I'm a Christian yeah. because it's not just the fact that you carry the Bible, it's not that you can quote <coughs> the Bible, it's the fact that the Bible is seen practically yeah. demonstrated in your lifestyle. Yeah. Also that you have resolved to show for the faith that you confess. That's right. Uh, when I listen to Dr. Sunday Adelaide teaching, because he doesn't preach, he teaches. Yeah. When I listen to him teach, there is, there is a, a satisfaction that you don't have to act to live a Christian life. You That's just right. live a Christian life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So for me, it's a, it's a, it's a, a, it's a breath of fresh air. Or yeah. Yes, that's it's a breath of fresh air to, to, the, to the Christian world, or yeah. to, to the world in general. Yeah. And I want to also use this platform, this opportunity to say to people who are out there, we only have one life to live. You don't have a spare life. This is the only one you have. And you better make it count. You better make it count. God has given each one of us an awesome privilege to be adopted into his family yeah. through his son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. He has also given us one of the greatest privilege, privileges in life by giving us the manual for life, which is the Bible. And it's expecting us to live our lives through the manual so that we can receive all that he has for us. But unfortunately, a lot of us Christians, we have been given religion yeah. in our church experiences. Yeah. We have been almost reduced to a bunch of people that lives on <laughs> that live under do's and don'ts. Yeah. 
<laughs> there's something wrong with having laws because where there's no law, lawlessness will rule, and that is calamity. But the Bible says it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Never to be subject to another yoke of slavery. And unfortunately, a lot of Christians, we are living under what I would call modern day slavery in the name of religion. <laughs> and when you come across a platform, a, a, a man, a servant of God, That's somebody right. like Dr. Sonia Delaja, mm -hmm. who will not just preach to you, who will not just preach at you, <laughs> but who will break the word of God down to simple, easy to adopt, easy to use to, yeah, yeah. you will do yourself a great honor, That's a right. great, great, great service. Yeah. To lay hold of that because ultimately that is what will make the difference in your life. Yeah. I think it's a it's a, a a replica of the nature of Christ on the earth today. Um, I also call him, you know, um, a restorer of people and an establisher of people because that is what he's doing. Because if you look on his platform and you check his friends of friends and, they, and you, you, would, you would see how he's touching lives all across, you know, the continent. And people are testifying. I mean, in celebrating um, his golden jubilee, um, yesterday we started a conversation in the evening and I want to say that even though the conversation went, you know, were different um, angles to it, but um, from the celebration of, the, of his birthday, you see that I believe that so many people all across the continent of the world are celebrating. There are some people that we don't even know who I believe celebrated who he is just because of what he's doing through his platforms and touching lives and changing lives and setting people free from slavery and bondage and from lack of understanding and ignorance as well of you know of the world of, of, of life of the world because we've been taught so wrongly so I believe that um, you know um, after Christ is the next um, second gift to the earth and I am asking that everyone listen to him so that you will be able to fulfill your call you will understand who you are on the earth and be able to fulfill your destiny. He would help you to see. He would help you to remove the veil that's covering your eyes. You know, all these ups and downs, you know, I'm trying to find my purpose. You know, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm confused. He will help you to analyze, you know, um, God's purpose for your life and being able to fulfill your destiny before you exit. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and if I can add to that, let us Jesus said, if you don't believe me for what I, I preach, just believe me for what you have seen me do. That's right. If you don't, if you still have any doubt in your mind about Dr. Sunday Adelaide, just look at what has been done. That's right. This country, Ukraine, <laughs> the whole of the former Soviet Union will never go to sleep again without the name Sunday Adelaja being spoken by one person. How, what, how do you account, how do you explain the phenomenal that one person, mm -hmm. a foreigner for that matter, <laughs> has had and is still having Right. On a region as big as this. That's right. During during the time when I was editing the materials for the magazine, I mean, there are things I read and I <laughs> I had to stop and read it again yeah. and again and again for me to to begin to understand the depth and the gravity of the effect and the influence of Dr. Sunday Adelaide. For instance, look at what, through his church and his ministry, the, the difference that they've made, that has been made 
on this nation of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Look at how many drug addicts mm -hmm. are off the streets yeah. and are today pastors. Yeah. Setting up centers to deliver others. That's right. Who are being fed. Mm -hmm. Let's 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 just talk openly as as people of God. Jesus said, I was in prison, you didn't visit me. I was naked, you never clothed me. I was sick, you never visited me. I was homeless, you never put a roof over my head. Mm -hmm. And yet you say you are my disciples. Practical Christianity yeah. is to reach out and be a blessing to others who are less privileged. But how many churches worldwide how many church leaders around the world can put hand on heart before God and be sincere to say they have the same effect, the same influence, the same outcome, the same result that we have seen, we have all read, because worldwide everybody has, we've all seen and read about it. Yeah, yeah. And we have the privilege yeah. of being here on the ground yeah. to see it. On Sunday, during the, the, the special reception, oh. a man was brought up, an alcoholic, a drug addict, before, before who has, God has healed and restored. This man has been so restored, he bought a house for himself. But after owning this house, he turned it around and gave it as a rehabilitation center to drug other drug addicts and he went and rented a flat an apartment where he is living mm -hmm. that is impact yes nobody told him to do that mm -hmm. but to whom much has been forgiven they do forgive a lot too that's right he knew where he was he yeah. knew how god reached out yeah. and touched him through this man through this ministry yes. through this church and restored him to his his wholeness yes and he's now extending that to, to others. others. Who need the same help. Yeah. The Bible talks about renewing our mind after being born again. That man's mind has been renewed to the point where what he had and what he has enjoyed is now willing to give it to others. That's right. Because a man gave him that understanding. So when it comes to the practical aspect of Christianity. The, the Bible says, show me your work of your faith. Don't just show me your faith. Faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. We have preached enough faith. We have talked enough church. It's time for us to do. This world is, is, is waiting for the demonstration if this our God is as real as we say and profess, show it. That's because right. the, God, the, the world wants demonstration. That's Enough right. of preaching. Let's go to the street <laughs> and do what it takes. Just right. as Dr. Sonia Delaja yeah. has been doing for over 30 years and is still doing. That's right. Ah. Ah. Guys, <laughs> this couple, they are loaded. <laughs> You know, they have a lot to say. You've seen that I've been quiet for over 20 minutes. Wow. I cannot be quiet for 20 minutes, but <laughs> I have to hear this. And because I also want you guys to hear and understand where they're coming from. It's been a fantastic interview with the Disses. There's so much that we can talk about. I think that we can have part one, part two, part three yes. with the Disses because we haven't even touched on the Golden no. Jubilee. We haven't touched on their experience here right now while they're in ukraine but saying that we have touched on a lot that have blessed us all right. that we could work on that we can develop that we can understand and maybe you know as an experience that would inspire us as well yeah. to take to launch out to take a bold step mm -hmm. to develop ourselves so we've heard about so many things i just want to remind you because they spoke about the nigerian transformation project Nigerian Transformation Project by Dr. Sunday. You can find out more information by going to sundayadilajablog.com slash Nigeria. So that will take you straight to the page. But if you just want the blog, you can go to sundayadilajablog.com 
But with this slash Nigeria, you will get all the information you need about the Nigerian Transformation Project. There are two forms in there. You want, want to join as a person in diaspora, or even if you're in Nigeria. So joining form to join the project, and a second one for funding for any project. So if you're interested in any project or you have projects in mind, there are funding available. So you can also apply with the second form. It's a long form and there are criteria to be met. So it's not just willingly willing, giving money out to anyone. You have to meet certain criteria. But if you meet the criteria, be assured that you will get funding. And everything starts as soon as he's able to leave Ukraine. So when he's able to leave Ukraine and goes to Nigeria, we proceed. Okay? And a reminder, Mrs. Mr. Disu talked about the kingdom and about not playing church, not playing religion. Now get out there and take the kingdom. Make a difference. Everybody that I've spoken here during this interview, you know that they've been about kingdom, yes. they've been about purpose, yes. they've been about humanity, they've been about loving people, mm -hmm. they've been about replicating. I don't need to ask the district about replicating Dr. Sunday because they're already mm -hmm. doing that. Yes. You know, you've seen so many examples already. And I just want to thank you guys again. I want to thank you for your time, thank you. for your patience, for agreeing for, to do this interview. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. So, and for the people watching us, <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm coming back again yes. because I've still got people that I need to interview. <laughs> but I'll give you a little break and then come back. I hope you will join me and the new people or the person that I'm going to interview. Again, I thank you. Thank you. So, see you later. Bye. Bye.